The American Academy of Dermatology and the National Psoriasis Foundation have issued guidelines on the treatment of psoriasis. Uh, and the guidelines are actually fairly loose. Uh, they leave a lot up to the prescribing physician. Uh, but what they do say is that um, certainly if you have more than 10% of your body surface area, uh, treatment with um, a systemic therapy is more than justified, either systemic therapy or phototherapy. If you have a percent body surface area that's under 10%, you can try to get by with topical therapy. But again, even in those um, patients with more limited disease, if the disease affects the face, or severe involvement of the scalp, or the palms and soles, which interfere with your daily activities and walking, it can still be severe. And um, in those circumstances, treatment with the systemic therapy is often justified. There isn't a single standard of care first-line therapy in psoriasis. We have, fortunately, a lot of choices uh, that are tapered to the particular patient's needs and, uh, and circumstances. Uh, so for example, if a patient has very limited disease on the elbows and knees, for example, we would normally first try topical therapy. Uh, if that didn't work, we have many additional options beyond topical therapy. Uh, uh, we can use combinations of different topicals. We can uh, use something called the eczema laser, which is a localized form of phototherapy or we can treat the patient with intralesional injections of steroids. All of those are acceptable uh, early therapies for limited disease. Um, if a patient has more severe disease, more extensive, involving more than 10% body surface area, use of topical therapies are, is, um, is impractical. Uh, and for those patients, we then have the options of either phototherapy, pills, or injectable medications called biologics. Phototherapy uh, is uh, quite a commitment. Uh, it involves going to light treatments usually three times a week. Uh, uh, and while home phototherapy is available, not everyone has the room for it. Uh, and some of the home units don't work as well as the units that are offered in a phototherapy center. Um, so patients often have to travel to a center three times a week for months. Um, so it's a big time commitment. and. Uh, you know, most patients do not have the ability uh, to take that time out of their life and work uh, to go three times a week. Um, uh, but that is a viable option for some. Um, we have several pills available for the treatment of psoriasis. The ones that are approved are cyclosporin. Uh, that is not good for long-term use, and the guidelines say it shouldn't be used more than a year total. Uh, because after a year, and certainly after two years, 100% of patients have evidence of kidney damage from cyclosporin, and it has a whole host of other side effects. Methotrexate used to be the most common treatment used for psoriasis before we had biologic therapies. Um, it is associated with a number of adverse effects, uh, primarily bone marrow toxicity and liver toxicity, which have limited its use. Um, uh, acetretin is a, uh, an oral therapy that has been available for decades also. Um, it is associated with severe birth defects, but probably um, the reason it's not used more, than, more often is that it's not that effective as monotherapy, and it has a lot of mucocutaneous effects that are unacceptable to patients. They lose hair, their skin develops a sticky feeling. Um, so it's not used very widely, although occasionally in combination with other therapies like phototherapy, it is very useful in low doses, which minimize the mucocutaneous side effects. The fourth uh, oral medication we have is called apremolast. Uh, its main side effects are diarrhea and weight loss. Uh, weight loss is often liked by our psoriasis patients since many are obese. Um, uh, it is modestly effective, but it is quite safe. Uh, and that's where it gets a lot of use. Um, uh, clinicians are not worried about prescribing it. Patients are not worried about taking it. Uh, the mechanism by which is, it acts is a phosphodiesterase inhibition. 
and things like caffeine is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor. So it's not a, uh, uh, a dangerous treatment, um, and it is modestly effective. Um, there are some more effective uh, medications on the horizon. They're either called Janus kinase inhibitors or the one that looks like it's closest to being approved for uh, psoriasis is a TIC2 inhibitor, tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll have that available. It is more effective than a premolast. Um, it probably is a little more immunosuppressive, uh, um, but so far the phase two data from its studies uh, appear to be uh, quite benign. It does not seem to have any serious side effects so far in limited numbers of patients.